Well, let's 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 talk a little bit about this. Uh, this is the story from NPR. Shinzo Abe killed at 67 leaves a storied legacy as Japan's longest serving premier. Mm -hmm. So for those that didn't see the story, I mean, this may this, this it's been a crazy week. Right. Yeah. I know the Large Hadron Collider just fired up, but man, already? Insane. Yeah. It's crazy been insane week. insane as soon as that thing opened. And it, I mean, it's honestly, it's been a crazy past month or so. But so Shinzo, Shinzo Abe in Japan, he's the longest serving pr uh, uh, prime minister. Mm -hmm. He's very popular and he was shot in the back. Mm. Cowardly. Cowardly assassination. The dude had a homemade shotgun. Mm. So, you know, people talk about how he opposed China. Mm -hmm. He was conservative. He opposed communism. And so many are wondering, what was the motivation for taking him out? Mm. Could it be that Japan was leading uh, uh, leading the cause against China in the in Southeast Asia? You look at what Joe Biden's uh, doing with his son. Mm. Joe Biden uh, was was taking oil out of the Strategic Reserve, and about a million barrels were given to China through a company called um, uh, what is it? Do you remember what it's called? No, yes, I don't. Rob? No, 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 no. no. Unit, unit, UNESCO. UNESCO. No, no, no not UNESCO. So, so, Sonapec or whatever. I can't remember the name. Okay. No, I can't. Sorry. We could put. We could pull it up. But um, you have to wonder. You know, his son's involved in these companies. Mm -hmm. Had apparently invested some some something through private equity. It really does look like they're trying to give or hoard wealth and bring it to China. You look at what happens to Shinzo Abe. I think they're not going to win. Mm. When when these actions are overt and in the public, and mm. it's no longer a conspiracy theory, Desperate. it looks like the liberal world order, the, mm -hmm. the, their global agenda is failing. Mm -hmm. They are desperately trying to stop the holes they're bursting in the hole, but they mm. can't do it. Do you think that the people like the the global banking establishment, for instance, like the Bank for International Settlements in Switzerland, is it intentionally moving the wealth and power away from the liberal world order? World order. I got to get this right. Liberal world order into BRICS, the Chinese world order, mm. or, and it's intentional. And that's why they're happy to see all this hatred of the liberal world order. Mm. Um, but they're still using the American government as pawns to try and act like we're defending it. Mm. Mm. Well, that's a good point. I mean, this you, world order. Sorry, Unipac. Or Unipac. Thank was you. The, was a Chinese company. Close enough. And it was associated with um, Sinopec is the, is the parent company of which Hunter Biden uh is tied to. Mm -hmm. In 2015, a private equity firm he co-founded bought a $1.7 billion stake in Sinopec Marketing. So I just think Joe Biden's gutting and selling out the system. And I think a lot of it is they're trying, I think they're trying to transfer wealth to China. Who invested? You said that transfer wealth to China. Biden's son invested in Sinopec? Hunter Biden is tied to Sinopec how, how, through a what? private equity firm he co-founded which bought $1.7 billion, uh, $1 billion stake in Sinopec okay, Marketing. Okay, the, the president's son is investing in, Chi in the communist Chinese oil companies. That this is freakish. Joe or Biden, his, his company is doing it. And Joe say. Biden took our oil and sent it their way. Oh, look, we're not enemies at every turn. I get that. But mm -hmm. like at some point, uh, like put the cards on the table. Well, well when, you sit, when you sit in a position of power, um, it gives you opportunity to make uh, a fortune for yourselves. And I think that, you know, especially when you use these terms like liberal world order, these people don't have an allegiance to America or United States per se, right? They have an allegiance to their club, to their families, right? We weren't invited out to, uh, what's the club that they just went out to out there in Switzerland? Davos? Oh, Davos. Davos. We yeah. weren't invited to Davos, right? So, I think it's that club. And then when we start saying, like, you know, moving money into China, it could be a little bit of hedging their bets, right? Like, you put a little bit of money here. I think they're trying to invest in Ukraine, right? And they're just trying to hedge their bets. My thing is, especially when I've been studying uh, Russian history, which is quite fascinating, um, they, they, uh, it seems like Russia is the one place they just can't penetrate too deeply this world order and they've been poking at it for a really long time obviously going back to uh the russian revolution etc cetera, etc cetera. they've been poking at this bear you know uh and then you know the north was uh allied you know abe lincoln basically owes russia for helping him win that war the civil war so you know um i don't know man i i look at russia as being a, a key uh component in all of this so when I look at this table, right, this pseudo table, 
you know, I guess there's America sitting at the table and there's some Chinese man sitting at the table. And I think the Russia, Russian oligarchs were kicked out the club, I guess. <laughs> right. <laughs> and they're just not allowed at the table anymore. But I think Russia has always been its own thing. And I think that's the one thing they're trying to conquer. But I think there's some buddy buddy with China. Oh, absolutely. Because China is so. Their population, they've come so far in, in, in just a short amount of time. This is a, a backwards agrarian society at one point. Like they were all farmers and then they started producing shoes and then they became a, a superpower and bootleg and everything. And they got a strong military. And I think we, we fear them. I think there's some legitimate fear there. I think everything we're seeing or across respect. the board is just the liberal world order has fallen. Mm. They, they've lost control. They lost control what in 2016. Is, what, what, what is this liberal world order? It, 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 it's a collection of um, international interests, mm -hmm. political leaders, and corporations mm. that are working together to prevent World War III. That's uh, the, to the council. To prevent World War III? Yeah, well, through, through use of Is limited. that their excuse, or is that what they're really trying to Henry do? Henry Kissinger talked a lot about limited war, and the mm. idea was we would set up proxy wars rather than say that we, there's some Russian aggression, communist. Oh, let's see what you're East. saying. Rather than bomb Moscow, we just have war with them in Vietnam. Yeah. And we could blow up all our weapons, and then you know Raytheon can make a, a crap load of money yes. still, and we can we can keep the, the power moving, keep yeah. the bombs building, but yeah. without having to destroy each other. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah you can yeah. you can pull up the Council on Foreign Relations and they break down what is the liberal world order or mm. the liberal economic world order. Oh, that's interesting. So when George W. Bush or um, anyone else says a new world order, they're talking about something evolving from the liberal world order, something else. Mm. The funny thing is, this was a conspiracy theory 10 years ago. Right, and now it's just public information. Yeah, it's kind of now Biden's with... advisors going on TV and saying it. Yeah, that's why I think it's falling apart. They needed to rule from the shadows. Call you crazy if you criticize them. Mm -hmm. They can't anymore. Mm. Now it's just the 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 truth. I think the new world order that they're trying to do is I don't know if it's the metaverse, if it's like Klaus Schwab's World Economic Forums. It's the governments cannot control themselves. They need corporations to control them. <laughs> they, they need the corporation. It is, <laughs> and he's wearing his like but Sith outfit. Have you seen outfit. that that cloak he wears? Or That's whatever? a new world order that could be established. But I don't like the idea of people being like digital slaves. Um, mm. Getting their body heat harvested and, and oh yeah. You know, as well, long as, as long as you're in charge, you know, like one of the five people controlling big tech Silicon Valley, everyone else, you're screwed. Yeah. Well, Why are we talking going. about it like the world order that takes power next is the last one? Good I mean, point. we've had many world orders, right? Many dynasties, empires. Nope, just one. Which one is that? Just one. Just, just I don't know, Biden. <laughs> just Biden? <laughs> just Biden. Just Globo it, Homo? <laughs> Biden, Biden has been the, uh, the, 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 the in charge of it all since uh, forever, actually. Yeah. Since Atlantis. Since, since Biden Atlantis. is actually <laughs> Satan. <laughs> The Biden family is, you know, it's funny is like Sun Tzu, when you are strong, appear weak, when you're weak, appear strong. Mm -hmm. Like the gag is that Joe Biden goes up on stage and then says nonsense and reads the prompter. And then he's like, and he, as soon as he gets backstage, he stiffens up, straightens up, says, all right, get to work, ladies, you know, everybody. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, right. clean, fast, sharp with it. It's like he's the 80th generation of Bidens who've been controlling the, the world. The spirit of Andy Kaufman is alive and well, ladies and gentlemen. Like, <laughs> this is total... Obama, you know, criticizes him, and then behind the scenes, he's like, "Joe, I'm, I'm so, you know, I had to say that because that's what they, okay, you get it, Wh whatever you need, sir." Mm. I feel like it's the Roman world order was pretty predominant, and then they made the Catholic Church to kind of they're like, "Well, if we can't govern them with our with our emperor anymore, we're going to govern their minds with our religion." And the well, you're, I I would agree with that. Um, I just want to add to that. I, I think it's sort of reverse order. I think people were first ruled by religion and then uh later on it was uh i guess nationality is what when was that it. when what like when nation states came to be well you had the islamic world right the islamic world was a huge superpower and that's ancient as well i mean they kind of in a way well it depends on what uh, you would define as ancient i mean 50 I, I, years old it's 50 years old. Yeah, if you would say 50 years <laughs> old, then yeah, like, you know, but All the 50 like the Ottoman Empire, the for example, like Ottoman mm -hmm. Empire doesn't fall until, I guess, what is it, the late 1800s, early 1900s? Right? Yeah, after World War One. Yeah. So the Ottoman Empire is like hugely Islamic, et cetera, et cetera. So they had a lot of power. In fact, the, you know, if you read this book by Chancellor William called Destruction of African Civilization, uh, there's, uh, if I'm not misquoting him, but there's a part in there that basically says Islam is the reason why African civilizations fell. 
Um, and it's pretty interesting what his hmm. theory is on that. I can explain what, if you want. But yeah. You have an elevator version, elevator pitch version? Yeah. Yeah. Basically, what he says is um, uh, the, 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 the missionaries of the caliphate uh, sit on your borders and they basically peddle the religion. But the, the the people that are sitting on the borders of your nation are also doubling as spies and learning about your culture and your ways and so on and so forth, how things move. And then basically what happens is, um, uh, you know, African is pit against African because you're now choosing am I African or am I Islam first? And many people were choosing Islam over being African. So now you have this divided nation. And he has a lot of evidence to support it in the book. Uh, I think it's a pretty interesting theory. The caliphate's interesting because it's not national. It's like this, its own entity. I don't know mm. much about it. I just know that the head of the caliphate is not necessarily the head of the country. Yeah. And yeah. so, so the, is it, they would say the nation, well, the nation of Islam was a specific thing right that was like a an organization that was created yeah yeah but then you also have then you have the church that comes down right so like when you go into african nations you'll see like the uh the white jesus on the wall like i I, like i buried my grandma i think it was last year in jamaica and it was just hilarious to see a whole black congregation and then them have like a picture of white jesus on the wall and all i just see is like colonization but I, I think uh, nations first ruled with religion, and I think you know after that it kind of evolved, and the new religion that, is something else now. That's crazy, to me though, because a lot of cultures have their own ethnic image of Jesus. Like there's, yeah. we, we talk about it a lot. There's mm-hmm. Japanese Jesus. Mm, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, and uh, um, we, we've we've had Seamus on talking about it too, where he's just like, yeah, of course, every culture views him as like you know as them or whatever, and there's like yeah. no yeah. issue there or whatever. And yeah. interestingly, uh, apparitions of the Virgin Mary are often uh, mm. different based on the culture. Mm. So Our Lady of Guadalupe appeared their ethnicity in their cultural garb, mm. um, but much different from Our Lady of Lords, for instance, or Fatima. Okay. Um, That's why I'm like, I don't, I don't see it. You know, we see these memes all the time from the left, and they're like, "Here's what Jesus really looked like," and it's like <laughs> a Sephardic. Like that's know, not guy. the point. Obviously, yeah, there's no the, description of what Jesus looks like in the Bible because that wasn't the point but, but of I'm, him being here. I thought here. it was Daniel seven verse nine or Daniel nine verse seven. I could be wrong. Yeah, it said he, he was six foot five with bulging muscles and blonde hair. <laughs> like Jason, he looked like Jason Momoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, from the from the from the. Wait, there, so there's literally you say there is a description of him, but you were mentioning. There's, yeah, I believe. Not there to is. my knowledge. Well, is it? I mean, I could see that that would be intentional if he had like dark skin, and they're like, we need to empower the Roman patriarchy, and we need to disempower the Jews. Let's make people I d- think I d- this guy's a white guy. I disagree. Mm-hmm. I think if they wanted to control you, if the idea was about control, you would need to convince the people he's of you. Mm. So yes, the yes. idea would be to make a picture of a Japanese Jesus, to make a picture of an Arabic Jesus or a white Jesus so that right. those people would be like, oh, yeah, they're like me. Mm. That's yeah. if, So if, they gave if, no description. Or I want to hear what you were saying. What was it called? The the section where you thought there was a description of Jesus? Oh, yeah. Is it Daniel 7 verse 9 or Daniel 9 verse 7? I'm no biblical guy. I could be completely off, but... Uh, that that just popped in my mind for some. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to Timcast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the Timcast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to Timcast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.